Thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Takao Inoue. I'll be presenting this uh, from National Instruments, and uh, this work was jointly with AWR's Joel Kirschman. So let me jump right in. Uh, this is uh, the short agenda for today. We'll first talk about the RF system design and models, uh, what that means to you in terms of RF circuit uh, subsystem and system level design, and look at a particular design example, and we'll show you how the collaboration between AWR and NI plays a role, could play a role uh, in this area. And we'll show you some examples showing the, the power of the software and the measurement coming together. <clears throat> so uh, suppose you're building an RF subsystems and uh, you're interested in looking at the performance of your subsystem. Uh, in AWR's visual system uh, simulator, you can prop in all these components and look at the link level uh, simulation performances, time domain, uh, link budget, and so forth. Now, in, in doing this simulation, the critical things are the type of models you use. Uh, the accuracy of your model is going to determine how accurate you can predict the performance of your RF sub subsystems. Uh, the level of simulation, of course, dictates how long it's going to take on your simulations and so forth. So these models are, play a critical role in how your simulation outcome is going to be. So in doing this, let's look at, uh, suppose we want to drop in a new mixer into your subsystems. And, and see how our tools can help in doing this. So uh, suppose I had a mixer that I wanted to drop in. Uh, I had one in, lying around in the lab, or perhaps this is the only one you can get your hands on. Uh, the first starting point is you got your data sheet from your manufacturers. Um, oftentimes, you get the spurious tables and the uh, harmonics table. Um, and let's just suppose your uh, system is designed for a different operating frequency, or you have to operate on a different power levels. And, and this data sheet is not sufficient for you. Then uh, you've got to really go back to your bench, recharacterize the device, and import that data to your simulation, redo everything again. So to simplify that process, uh, one of the things you can do, well, before we get to that, the critical thing is making the measurements. And of course, if you're in the lab scenarios, you've got to do, go through all these pains, setting up your lab, uh, getting all, everything calibrated, set it up. And of course, you've got to make sure you have all the right tool chains to import the data and everything. So uh, one of the ways to do this with NI hardware, what's convenient is the modular instrument structure. In this case, I'm showing two signal generators on the left, a uh, signal analyzer in the middle, and some switches. So in this case, you can generate two uh, signals for your input to the mixer, and the switches to switch in and out uh, different components around it uh, for, for your different measurement points. Now, this allows you to have a much more compact uh, measurement system, and you can fully automate this through uh, a LabVIEW software. So one way to do this, in generation side, uh, you can actually specify and program at will the range of frequency you want to test, say, the certain harmonics or uh, spurs that you want. You set those frequency in the uh, front panel. And you can also script some custom scenarios that you want to measure and create a table for. And uh, here you have area for scripting, range of frequency, different power levels, and the particular device, the generator that you want to generate this from. <clears throat> now, on the analyzer side, uh, you would also synchronize the particular range of frequency that you want to measure, create your table from. And the key thing here is that you can output a AWRD compatible file format in a text file that will be updated in the visual system simulator scenario. Now, doing this, um, so this shows you what's called the front uh, panel diagram in LabVIEW. It, behind the scenes is this LabVIEW code that actually configures the instruments and uh, set up your measurement in your uh, measurement setup. Uh, so in doing this, you can actually custom at a much deeper level than what you saw in the front panel and actually go and set individual items, or you can actually, this is, LabVIEW is a fully programmable environment, so you can drop in loops, uh, do custom configuration to iterate on certain things. For example, uh, certain harmonics may not be sufficient with just one measurement. You may need to do some averaging, uh, different statistical processes. You can do all of that 
in, in LabVIEW and incorporate it into this front panel diagram. Now, um, once the uh, measurement is complete, uh, that output goes directly to a text file. And by setting up that particular text file in Visual System Simulator beforehand, you can actually read that measured data immediately into your simulation file. So you don't have any file transfer, USB sticks, Ethernet transfers, uh, going to different benches and so forth to import your data into your simulation. So your designer can actually have everything in front of you, take the measurement, and have a simulator running right next to it, take the data right away, and reflect it on your simulation results. Now, what, what that would look like in the Visual System Simulator is that you would have the particular data file in the project tree. And those data would look something like this for different OIP3 measurement in this case, and the spur table that you might have gone through in the LabVIEW sequence. And these are automatically read in. And now the task is to go back and reevaluate the system, look at how your RF subsystem is performing after you, your new measured uh, table of data. So here's uh, one way to show the uh, simulated results in the VSS. Uh, you can look at the, in, in terms of plots, uh, look at the spurs, and you can look at it also in a table format, take it out to a, a data file. So the point here was that you know, oftentimes, the, either the parts you had lying around or the uh, supplied data sheet wasn't enough for your particular operating point for your RF subsystems. So there's obviously a need for custom models. You need to characterize that yourself. So in, in order to alleviate some of those pains, we're, uh, one way to do that, we, what, what I suggested here, is to use the NI instruments to automate that measurement process. And then there's a way now for you to take that data directly into VSS and incorporate it into your simulation for your uh, better prediction of your RF subsystem design. <clears throat> 